Oh, hello again. So carrying on on the story, uh, I go to the retreat and it was, that retreat happened in 2013. My sister had passed in, 20, in 1919. So that's about 14 years later, was it? Or something like that. Well, about 10 years. I don't have the dates. I think I put the date precisely in my book, but... Uh, I, I go to that retreat and during the time uh, when I went to the retreat, I was still into a self-isolation mode, uh, thinking that, yes, I don't want to interact with human beings because anyway, human beings, they, 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 they don't know my story. They haven't experienced what I'm living, so they wouldn't know, they wouldn't understand. And I think that's what that retreat was about. It was to... Uh, start breaking me out of that is isolation because during that retreat I realized that well that all the people there were going through their own struggling journey and uh, I where it actually hit me was when during lunch at some uh, at a moment uh, I was sitting across a lady and she started telling me her story and I suddenly realized that I wasn't the only one struggling through grief, that there were other people struggling through grief. So I could tell them about my story, whereas up to then, I wasn't feeling I could tell anybody because nobody would get me. And that was a breakthrough. That was really, 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 thank you, <laughs> uh, a, a, a breakthrough to help me understand that I wasn't alone and that there were other people who could understand my suffering whether they were living it or not, because everybody is going through their own journey and everybody have their journey. And I, during that, that retreat, I, he I heard from other struggle, I, 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 I couldn't imagine that people would actually put themselves through that because I, know, I knew that if it was me, I wouldn't have gone, I, I would just have moved, basically. They were not the kind of struggle I would have accepted to be inflicted um, upon me. Uh, so, yes, it was really, really, it allowed me to to take a step back and realize that I wasn't alone, that there were people I could talk to about this. Um, and then that was the beginning of me starting to open up. So this is the message. This is the message for the people who are carrying on alone in their grieving process. Please, they are meetup groups if you go onto google and you google meetup and you google maybe grief or spirituality or um, trauma whichever topic comes to your mind i'm going to come back to what you're inspired on which is the the other side helping you basically you will find group of people with whom you can share your story and you can break from the isolation because during that isolation, since I didn't want to interact with people other than for physical sustenance, which is through work, um, I wouldn't find people to talk with and to exchange. I was feeling really, really lonely and really, really isolated. The good side of it is that I basically, uh, that, that the positive of that is I learned to do everything by myself and to be satisfied and be happy with my own company, which is something which is really difficult when you're normally used to interacting with people and very sociable and things like that. So solitude is a killer to many people, but through my that, that self-imposed isolation, I basically managed to transcend that feeling. And now I'm very comfortable being by myself. So that's a win, yay! But to the one who are really struggling and thinking, okay, I really wish to have company, um, I would say initially I was looking for maybe a boyfriend to fill that gap, but that wasn't the way. Now, that's, that's the worst answer I could have given myself because that's um, the attractor to the worst kind of boyfriend you can ever wish for. Why? Because like attract like. So I was so depressed that the only type of people I was attracting were the depressed people. Whereas the people I needed were the joyful and well in their shoes people. So boyfriend, not, not the option. 
uh, the other people basically to get were the, the people from uh, who were sh sharing my stories. So um, I found a group uh, where I was living uh, from conversation with God and I started connecting with these people, telling and sharing our stories. But this retreat basically was the signal to me that my intuition, what I was thinking, my inspiration were not just something made up out of my mind. They were spirits guiding me through uh, my recovery process and putting on my path different tools to help me uh, transcend that loneliness and to help me go through uh, the challenge of isolation and grief. The second thing, the second key uh, element they put on my path was uh, uh, during a winter uh, where I was, see, it was gray. The weather was so gray and it was so dark. Like in the middle of the day, midday, it was so dark. And I was looking at people and they all looked so depressed. And I thought, and I remembered how joyful and lively I was. And I thought, this is not possible. There is no more life on earth. And like, as I was thinking of that, uh, another video popped to me. Bang! And it was Brandon Bouchard. For if you go on to brandon.com, you will see the person I'm talking about. It was Brandon Bouchard doing one of his 10 minute video talking about one topic. I don't remember which one because I watched most of them and they were for a long time, for many, many months. My, the, basically my breath of life during the mornings because I was still in my isolation mode. I wouldn't want people's help, but I needed help. So basically the angels find this way of helping me. Since I've answered uh, one way of being helped, which was through the audiobook, through YouTube, uh, and then, and I followed through with going to the retreats. Now they were sending me other tools through, while well, the same media I was using, which was YouTube at the time. Uh, I still use YouTube now and Facebook as well. Uh, and then, Yes, Brandon popped up and I thought, ah, finally some life on this planet. And it was so great. It was so great. It just basically revived me so much. Uh, so from then on, every morning, the good thing is that's why I'm sticking to 10 minutes because 10 minutes was enough to basically strip me out of this thick darkness I was in and lift my mood to begin my journey so that I can basically have some lively before I go to work. Uh, so I was listening to him while brushing my teeth, having the shower, and then I, I, I was ready and awake for the day. So that was how it happened. Messengers, and following that, I had many, 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 many other messengers, of which the latest one was Dolores Cannon, um, who, uh, her, you need to Google her because I don't have her website in mind, but it's Dolores, uh, D-O-L-O-R-E-S, Canon, C-A-N-N-O-N. Uh, you can Google her and you, and you will be taken to uh, her website. And she was uh, 20 years later, only, well, yeah, she was popped to me only 20 years later after I've been through so many other things, uh, among which the ayahuasca experience, which I'm going to talk about in the next video but basically she um she basically pushed through she transcended the different um uh dimension which is between her on the other side and me on this side to help me and she had helped me so much basically she put through to me through youtube all the videos that contain the answer to my questions and, and, and among which her book, uh, Life After Death, I think, which answered all my questions regarding death. So, and, uh, and she also answered my question of why this land I'm living in is so negative. And uh, she answered that as well. And uh, that is linked to the Stonehenge uh, story. So Dolores Cannon, thank you so much. Uh, her method as well, the QHHT uh, method, which is um, a, a specific hypnosis method, which actually takes you under, but you stay kind of awake while we leaving those things is fantastic. 
that uh, solved another deep issue I had, which was suffering from a voodoo spell. So I actually accumulated quite a few things here. But again, that is in the, in the next uh, video. Thank you so much for listening so far. And please share it with people who are struggling with grief so they can uh, learn to trust the intuition take, so they can act on it and, and, and get the, the, the help they need in their isolation mode. Thank you.